Trial continues today in the case against Michael Haim, a man who's accused of killing his wife, then burying her in his backyard more than 20 years ago. Now this morning, court began with an intense look at Bonnie Haim's bones and the excavation site. Of course, Bonnie Haim, the main victim in this alleged crime. The focus was on two main points. What could have caused a, quote, defect in Bonnie's hip bone? Prosecution argues it was a bullet. Defense says that cannot be proven. Also, there was a lot of discussion about primary and secondary grave sites. An important part of the defense's argument, Dr. Heather Walsh Haney, a forensic pathologist, testified for nearly two hours. Now, I'm in for Katie Jeffries, but that's because Katie Jeffries leads our Unsolved series and has been following this case very closely. She joins us now from the Duval County Courthouse with the very latest. Good morning, Katie. Good afternoon, Katie. Good afternoon. So like you said, this case began today with a really in-depth look at the remains of Bonnie Haim as well as her bones, which is something that could not have been easy for her family there in the courtroom to have to sit through because there were lots of pictures of her, her skeletal remains. Now, Dr. Heather Walsh Haney was called to testify. She is a forensic pathologist, so she studies what things like water and the environment, how that can impact human remains over long periods of time. Now, she said the fact that Bonnie was buried underneath a shower, that that constant kind of stream of water, that drip of water, that could lead to serious deterioration of the bones. And there was two main points that uh, appeared to be being made by both sides. First was about the grave site itself. Now, since Bonnie was found with her arms, shoulders, and her hands, Dr. Walsh Haney said it was unlikely that her body was exposed long after death because there was no evidence of scavenging animals. She also said there was no presence of insects, which, which she said would imply that Bonnie was buried almost immediately after her death. But the defense was ready to come back on this point. Now, one of the things that they mentioned in their opening statements was the possibility that Bonnie was moved to that grave site in the backyard where she was eventually found. So they asked if Bonnie could have been buried elsewhere and then moved. Now here's part of that exchange between the defense and Dr. Haney. If you had very little time, um, you would make a, a smaller grave and you would bend the body at the joints, you know, the knees, uh, the hips, perhaps the elbows, and get the body into the grave as best you can. You can tell that whether or not this was a first, a secondary, or even a tertiary grave site, can you? Correct. So that was a very big point there for the defense that they were trying to make, and it's something that we will likely hear about again in the closing argument. So now let's go to what's being called a circular defect that was seen on Bonnie's hip bone. Now the prosecution argues that it was a bullet wound. And there was a, a bullet kind of cartridge casing found in the soil around Bonnie's body at the time she was excavated. The defense pushed back saying that it could be a pebble or something that was pushing against her hip bone while she was buried. Now, when they asked Dr. Haney if that could be possible, her response was, quote, only if that pebble was shot out of a gun, end quote. So the prosecution is expected to wrap at some point today, and then the defense will uh, call up their witnesses. We are expecting closing arguments by tomorrow, though. That's kind of the timeline that the judge has laid out. But, of course, we'll keep you updated as any new developments come in from this trial. And, again, it is important to note that Michael Haim has pleaded not guilty in this case. From the Duval County Courthouse, Katie Jeffries, First Coast News on your side. All right, Katie, thank you. So our coverage of the Haim trial will continue online, firstcoastnews.com. And be sure, get on Twitter if you aren't. It's a great place to follow Katie Jeffries there as well as Ann Schindler. Uh, her handle on the screen, and she is live tweeting from the courtroom each and every day with some great content there.